Well, we haven't seen you since uh, since December, man. You've been uh, you've been you've been out on, on the sidelines. What, what have you been up to? <laughs> I've I've uh, since December. I've I've really been training. I mean, I took took uh, some time off. Obviously, after any fight, I take a couple weeks off. But uh, you know, I I've been training a lot. I'm still in New York training and and grinding it out. And was waiting for the phone call, and it happened. You know, just a couple months ago. So. Seems like you've been uh, kind of cross training a little bit, making the rounds. Talk about who who you work with. It seems like every day I, I check you out on social <laughs> media, you're training at some other gym. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think a lot of guys have their doors open to me, um, especially under the Henzo umbrella. So, but as far as like you know, my main camp, I'm at Church Street Boxing. I'm at Henzo's New York City, um, and then occasionally I'll I'll go to like um, you know uh, Nick Atone's gym, you know, or I'll even go down to uh, Keith Trimble. Um, and work out with Andre, the, the current Titan FC champ. I went down to Nick Catone's gym and I work out with Marlon Moraes. You know, these are top, top dogs and we're sparring, we're drilling, we're, we're you know, we're doing everything. And then I, and then I come back to my, uh, you know, camp and, and bring what I can back. So, but I'm all, you know, New York has a lot to offer, I think now, as opposed to maybe seven, eight years ago in MMA. So now there's a lot of development, a lot of new schools opening, especially with UFC becoming legal. Mm -hmm. The popularity is, is, is way up there. So, you know, and, and you know, there's a lot of gyms that I go to, so. Very cool. Let's talk about your last fight. I know you were disappointed uh, to get the split decision lost there. Uh, what lessons you take out of that? Uh, you know, every fight is a lesson, especially, you know, taking a loss. And it was, it was fairly close, um, cl close fight. Um, you know, this strategy wise, Maybe my strategy was off. Maybe he was a bit more hungrier than me. Um, you know, so I analyze, I watch the tape a lot. So I made some adjustments and, uh, you know, I'm hoping to perform way better than I did. Nice. Despite the loss, they come to you with Henan Barral. Uh, I mean, that's a big fight. That's a big name, a former champion. So what did you think when that was the name they came with and the fact that you had to come to Brazil to take it? <laughs> yeah, my manager called me, I remember. Is that, he actually called me when I was working out doing sprints on the treadmill and then I remember picking it up. I was like, hello? And he's like, he's like, brother, I got a fight for you. And I was like, okay. So I thought about it for a few seconds and I was like, dude, this is huge, man. You know, like this is the biggest opportunity. Right now I've been fighting for 13 years, um, you know, dedicating my life to this, to this sport. And this is the fight I, I, I really need in my career. Um, you know, trying to move up the ranks, get into the top five, top 10 of the UFC. And, uh, you know, to be facing a former world champion, that could really give me some proving ground that I belong, you know, up there. So, you know, to pursue, pursue any sport or any art to such a high level, you want to be in the top of the division. So I could not turn this fight down. This is exactly what I need. This is what I want. And, you know, Barraz is, is, is a great opponent for me. That's cool, because, I mean, when, when they announced this fight, I really, with you being in the co-main event especially, I, I kind of looked at that like this is... The biggest fight of your career, no Absolutely. doubt about it, and you're feeling that way. I'm definitely feeling that way. Um, you know, I took, I'm taking this fight ultra, ultra serious. Um, you know, and and I brought my training to another level. I feel like I brought my training to another another level, and you know, it's definitely going to show. What do you think about Barab? I mean, as you said, former champion, lost in his debut, but it was in the featherweight division, I should yeah. say. Uh, but it was it was a really good fight. But yeah. I, I still feel like he's a little bit of an unknown commodity. You know, is he a, a, an elite level featherweight or not? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, does this game translate from 135 pounds or, or not? I mean, I th I've seen him uh, in the hotel here. He doesn't seem like a like a full 145er. Um, I know what made him drop, uh, come up to 45 was you know taking a couple of losses against TJ and stuff, and hoping he was hoping that his speed would capitalize. But you know, shoot, you know, he, he it's hard to move around with guys who cut a lot of weight. Jeremy Stevens, he cuts a bit of weight. I think I cut maybe even more than him. But uh, you know, I think my size-wise, um, it's going to be hard hanging with with some big 45ers, you know. Um, so that could be a tough decision for him to try to make, take a crack at the 45 division. But you know, that's why I'm here. I'm here to to to, to stop that. <laughs> yeah, first time fighting in Brazil. It's been a tough place for for Americans coming down. I mean, obviously you got the travel number one. <laughs> You know, the culture is a little bit different. And then, of course, the atmosphere is something special as well. So, yeah. you know, what have you done to, to kind of combat that? And what are you anticipating? Um, you know, I definitely mentally prepared. And as a fighter for, for so many years, I've gone to foreign territory and, and fought the hometown boy. So, you know, I'm used to that. Probably not at this magnitude because, you know, I think the arena holds 14 or 15,000 fans that will probably be booing me. <laughs> um, but uh, mentally preparing, I mean, whether they're boos or cheers, 
um, I just absorb it all as long as I could hear my corner and um, you know just just have fun in there you know I did download a, a clip of 20 minutes of booing that I listen to my iPod sometimes uh, and you know and then that sometimes prepares me so that's awesome yeah yeah did you do that during training or like just yeah just training out? or even in even after training just to be like get in the zone regardless <laughs> of what I hear cheering too you know it's, it's good to mentally prepare yourself as a fighter for this type of crazy stuff that's fantastic well after seven months away it might be too much to ask but you know there is another another event in the Philippines in three weeks there's a couple featherweight fights on there yes. a couple lightweight fights yes. maybe are you, yeah. are, you, are you putting your name in the hat? Uh, you know, and I, when I really honestly thought they were going to put me on the October card. That's what I was more like mentally preparing for. And this, this came up. So, But as far as uh, the October card in Manila, you know, I come out of this doing a great job, you know, and, you know, that would be an amazing opportunity to fight again in Manila in front of my family there, in front of my friends. It's my second home. And uh, even further, they got the November card in Madison Square Garden, which is my real home. And I've been a New Yorker my entire life, so that's, that would be a huge opportunity. But uh, either way, I'm definitely going to go to the fight in, in MSG somehow. <laughs> um, but in the Philippines, we'll see what happens. You know, I, I like to do things piece by piece, and everything comes out swell, and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully I just get a good win. Well, first things first, obviously, hitting Burrell before we can look to all that. So when you play this thing out in your mind, uh, how do you see this one going down? I see myself finishing Barrow, and that's the way that's the way this fight has to go down. If I leave it to the judges and it's close, just like uh, you know, I had a couple of close fights in my recent career, and you know, they're definitely going to give it to him as far as like the judging is concerned, and probably so this the stadium doesn't uh, collapse. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I have to expect something like that coming out is a, here is a big challenge, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to finish him. And if it goes to a decision, which I likely not, it's going to be a dominant, dominant performance by, my, by me.